Coming up, me too. No, me four. The full review. We'll go camping with the Braven. If you like the Sumo Bean Bag, you'll love the Sumo Lounge. And we've got a wireless Wi-Fi enabled crockpot. Plus, how to turn on your lights with a push of the button. It's time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great tasting, healthy snacks right to your door. Forget the vending machine and start snacking smarter with healthy, delicious treats like dark cocoa almonds. Oh, baby. To get your free NatureBox sampler free, go to naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. And by Smart Things, the easiest way to create a smart home. Smart Things lets you control your home using your smartphone from anywhere. For 10% off any home security or solution kit, visit smartthings.com slash twit and use the offer code TWIT10. Hey, hello, how are you? Good to see you. Welcome to Before You Buy, the Twitch show where we get the greatest, latest products and give them to our staff for a real-world test, a real-world review. And uh, we're going to kick things off with part two of our look at the newest, hottest phone in China, a phone you can't get in the U.S. Jason Howell from All About Android has the Xiaomi Mi 4. Mi 4. Why do we care? The last week with the Mi 4. Why yes. do we care? Because in the past couple of years, we've heard a lot, we've continually heard more and more about this Chinese company named Xiaomi and their dominance in the Chinese market. China is a huge market, obviously, in the, in the cell phone world. We're so used to hearing about Samsung being this dominating, you know, uh, Korean manufacturer. And here comes Xiaomi, and they're creating really impressive hardware. They have ambitions to be in the U.S. At least, definitely, they have ambitions to go more global than they are right now. Um, so I think this is just kind of the beginning. We, we are going to continue to hear more and more about Xiaomi. But more than that, uh, they hired away one of Google's top presenters, Hugo right. Barra. We used to love watching him at Google mm -hmm. I.O. and other events. He's now their vice president for international, mm -hmm. which tells me that Xiaomi has its eye on the U.S. market. Absolutely, and he's yeah. kind of critical to that. That was part of the reason that he was brought in, was to uh, just help them go global um, to a wider scale. So you gave us a, a quick look, at because you had just received it at yep. the Xiaomi 4 last week. You spent a week with it. Give us yeah. your thoughts. I actually took it camping this week. Oh. So it seems like camping is kind of a little bit of a thread in, in today's show. Yes, it is. Um, but yes, yeah, so I've spent the last week with this as my cell phone. Of course, I'm on T-Mobile. And one of the big downsides right now with this device in particular is that it's meant for the Chinese market. So LTE in the States is not going to work. There is a model of the Mi 4 that's expected to come out later this year that will have LTE support. So it'll support more bands of LTE. But here in the States and definitely on T-Mobile, uh, I was on kind of slower speeds. It wasn't. It wasn't the end of the world. It was still kind of HSPA uh, plus, you know, speeds like five megabits or whatever. Not bad. So it's not bad. But the nice uh, thing about T-Mobile, at least around here, is not very congested, so you get all yeah, the bandwidth you that can get. Is Fair enough. That's very yeah. true. So yeah. let's just rattle off the specs real quick to catch everybody up. It's a 5-inch 1920 by 1080 uh, IPS LCD display. That's 441 pixels per inch. And right off the top, the display, I think, is one of the key features of this phone. It's an amazing display. It looks so good on our uh, screen here. It's weird. It like, it, it, my eyes, again, are just being like, uh, you know, they're, they're being warped to uh, future devices because I've gotten so yeah. used to how sharp everything looks on here. When I look at my Nexus 5, for some reason, uh, I have to kind of alter alter myself a little bit to enjoy it. It has all the crispness and dynamic range of an OLED display, but mm -hmm. all the advantages really of does. a higher quality IPS display. So it really this, does. This seems like the display of the future from not just this company, but every other company. Yeah, it's really good. I will, I will say, though, I've only had it a week, and I don't know if you can catch it in the reflections. Probably not, but there are tiny little scratches that have uh -oh. already kind of... Not good kind of happened so yeah, I, I don't know what yeah. that means for the longevity of the screen from a durability standpoint uh but there you go and i take i take care of my devices although i guess i did go camping so it's very possible that something happened there uh 2.5 gigahertz quad core snapdragon 801 processor which is pretty much top of the line right now 801's great with three gigs of ram so this thing is screaming and i think i said on last week's show and it continued to be the case os uh os level stuff for the most part 
really, really happy with. Things just kind of fly when you're working through it and you know going everywhere that you need to go. Um, there's not as much slowdown or lag on this that I'm used to seeing out of most Android devices. So I don't know if that's the software or or what, but uh, it's, well, that's it's a, really great. That's a good point. This isn't stock Android. No, it? this is uh, this is their own version of Android called MIUI. And actually, because of that, because it's a you know Chinese company, they have their own MIUI. You can see it's kind of like a vertical or sorry, a horizontal layout. There is no app drawer. There's a lot of you know, a lot of intricacies of this particular OS. But it feels a lot like the iPhone, doesn't it? It does. Well, yeah, and I mean, you can see from the design, right? It takes a lot of design cues from the from the iPhone. Back actually looks a lot like Samsung. <laughs> it's more of a plastic back. This they back steal from the best. Cover, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the thing about this device that I've noticed over the past week. There, there isn't a whole lot of originality with this device, right? But they do it really well. Yeah. So it's not the most original device, but they've integrated all of these components into a really nice, tight package that just works. It works really, really well. That's not aluminum around the edge. That's uh, stainless. Stainless steel. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Which I like as a material. <laughs> Although I had this on the dash navigating up to our campground. And by the time we got there, I'd take the phone off the mount and... Pretty hot. Screaming hot. Yeah. Like, I could hardly even hold it. But yeah. I, I suppose that's just uh, par for the course. Um, 16... So, 3 gigs of RAM. There's 16 gigs of storage in this device, although you can get up to 64 gigs. 13 megapixel rear-facing camera and 8 megapixel front facing camera which sound great but I'd say the camera is one of the big downsides here I don't know if you have those images lined up Brian but um, and and I don't know how well it's going to come across on video on the screen but basically a lot of the pictures that I took even in great light because you know we we're camping it was sunny it was really nice I had to really kind scramble to find solid out. pictures that's that's that nighttime. That's okay, but I yeah. mean, there were a million others at, during this this time that didn't come out so well. Lots of smears in the faces, um, you know, partially because they're moving. But this one, I was able to get a, a good picture. But again, I had to really go digging to find some solid, solid pics. Is um, it the same Sony chip that's in everything else? Thirteen megapixels makes me think it might be. Yeah, I, th I believe that it is. Yeah. I, I want to so say really that it comes it down is. to software. That's HDR. I thought the HDR was okay on it because um, it was kind of. That's dark a cha in there. that's a challenging shot. With yeah, the and this well, we this saw this just, on Facebook. You know, I love yeah, this <laughs> cute, cute indoor. But this is front facing camera. So oh, interesting. I, I will say that the front facing camera is pretty decent. It's an eight megapixel front facing camera, so it's not bad. Yeah. And then the video um, just got a lot of jumpiness to some video that I that I recorded. Audio on that video would max out really easily and just kind of distort. So I would say the camera is definitely not the strong suit on this device. Um, Non-removable 3080 milliamp hour battery underneath this case. You can actually remove this case if you have a suction cup. It'll pop it right off. And they have uh, replacement cases. So, you know, everybody's doing the stylized, like, Moto X, uh, Moto Maker style, you know, replacements that you can do. And you can customize this as well with different backs. Now, when we talked last time, you said you were able to put the Play Store on here. And I was. You okay. can install all the apps. So have you put the Google Apps on there? Yes, I have. So if you go into the Me Market, I believe this is the Me Market anyway. <laughs> can you read this? That's me, the uh, problem. You, yeah. it's, it's still a lot in Chinese. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, there it is. There's the Me Market. Okay. So if you go into the Me Market and you do, do a search for Google, um, you'll find this app right here, which is the Google installer. And this is how everybody kind of does it. Basically, all I did is I installed the Play Store through here. Got and it. it and it has four, th three dependent files that you also have to install on it. It does that for you. Then once you have it, then you can go into the Play Store, associate your account to it, and uh, you know download all of your normal apps. So now it's just a normal experience. Yes, but it comes with a downside, right? Play Services is this is this crazy beast, you know, that we've gotten very very used to inside our Android devices. But because this is a Chinese device with a different um, UI, so so kind of getting to me UI, right? Um, it has some different workings underneath. For example, fill into apps, which is something I use all the time for LastPass. And I'm sure you do too, because oh, you're a yes. LastPass user. Doesn't work on this phone. Yeah. Doesn't work even if LastPass is logged in and everything. Right. Link bubble, opening uh, links deep by default into Link Bubble. That doesn't work. Mm. So little things like that, which make me kind of hesitate to say this is a phone for everybody. More a phone for, at least in the U.S., it's more a phone for tinkerers uh, if you're dependent on, on Google's services. You know, opening Play Store links in the app versus a browser. So if you click it on a normal Android device, it would just take you right through to the Play Store and open it there. But here, it just it always goes into the browser, so mm. you kind of have to go to the Play Store and search it. Uh, so it's kind of a hacky way uh, to do it with this device.
Um, other things, theme store. If you have me credits, you can theme your device. I could show you theming it really quick. Um, I didn't get a credit, this was a free one, and I'm not sure that I really care for it too much, but I'll, I'll install it just to show you kind of the process, and now it's loading the launcher. Are those capacitive, but it doesn't have physical buttons, they're capacitive buttons They're capacitive the buttons down at the bottom, yeah. All right, so now, now it looks even more like an iPhone. A new theme, which apparently, if I go two swipes, then I get this like strange, Overlay. Uh, I, don't, weird. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't know either. But oh, that's interesting. There we go. Huh. Uh, anyways, so now we're looking at a different theme. But so there's a lot of customization options. Um, what else is there to be said? Could uh, I hack it? Could I? Is it root locked? Could I? Uh, could I put Cyanogen mod on it? Probably not. You know, I didn't actually look into that on this device. I have to imagine that somebody has looked into doing that. I, I couldn't tell you honestly. It requires the Cyanogen capable. developers to, to, to get one. It just it requires some energy with it. a developer who just yeah. wants to spend the time trying to find some sort Port of an over. access point. Yeah. And a uh, you know vulnerability into the device, so I'm sure. And how much was I'm it? Sure. Was it what, is it fairly inexpensive? Three hundred twenty dollars uh -huh. unlocked in China. Unlocked, uh, unsubsidized. Unsubsidized, wow. unlocked in China. So if you're there, three hundred twenty dollars is is how how much you're going to spend. If you're in the U.S., which is kind of how I'm basing this review, right? Because that's kind of where we are right now. Um, you're probably looking upwards around four hundred and eighty dollars from. Still, it shows you can get a flagship quality hardware. Mm -hmm. for a very low price. It's, I mean, still, it's very reasonable, right? $480 unlocked yeah. is pretty great. And I, I would say that more, more or less this device warrants that cost. Uh, it just you know, has a few downsides, like I've said. So uh, Unknown in our chat room says that Cyanogen is available for Mi 3, so the Mi okay. 4 presumably will get Cyanogen. I would guess point. so. Yeah. yeah, there you go. And then you could unlock, I'm sure, more of the capabilities. But again, this doesn't have the LTE band, you know, the LTE antennas for the United States necessarily. So, uh, you know, buyer beware. As Are we going to do a buy, try, don't buy? Uh, yeah, I, th I think let's do it. Right. But let's do it from the perspective of where we are, because, you know, it, it's like if you're planning on importing it. Right. I think it's a different story. If you're in China, <laughs> if you're watching this show and you're in China, this is a great device for you. And I don't think you should hesitate because it's a fantastic deal. Uh, if you're in the U.S., for example, and you're thinking about picking up this device, let's do the pros. Uh, solid design. I'm just continually super impressed by the design of this device. Uh, the screen is fantastic and super sharp, just love the screen. I just want to pick it up and, and play with the phone because the screen's so sharp. Uh, Performance-wise, excellent performance, and of course, the price. It's a pretty uh, pretty awesome price for the hardware you get. Uh, as far as the cons are concerned, camera, definitely, and that's a big downside for a lot of people, so keep that in mind. The software has little issues with it that if you're a true Google Android fan, you're either going to be okay with it or it's going to be a deal breaker. Um, no LTE in the States yet, and that'll be coming down the line. And and the importer process might be just you know more than you want to bear. But I'd say if you're an Android enthusiast, you might want to buy it. You, you probably would enjoy it. Outside of that, I don't know. I think there's just kind of still too many hurdles for anyone outside of Android enthusiasts in the States, well, anyways, uh, to be okay with. with too many other good get. choices with many more to come. Well, just plenty of other corner. choices that have yeah. full support if you're living in the U.S. Yeah. Jason Howell, All About Android. It's actually coming up in about an hour. That's right. And uh, we also uh, see him every Monday through Friday on Tech News Today at 10 a.m. Yep. Pacific on uh, the Twit Network. Thanks, Jason. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. I'm glad you had a nice camping trip. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you've ever seen, uh, if you've ever looked at our social media feeds, you've probably seen pictures of Father Robert Balasser on his giant sumo lounge beanbag. He loves that beanbag. He lives in that beanbag. But Sumo Lounge came to us with something new that's a little different, and we thought we'd give it to Robert to test the Sumo Lounge Omni Reloaded. Robert? I've been reviewing Sumo Lounge gear for nearly six years. Over that time, I've come to know the line as pricey, but super high-quality units that changed my idea of what geek furniture can look like. The comically large Sumo Titan introduced me to a bed-sized apparatus that could double as a crash bag. The ridiculously comfortable Sumo Sway Couple was the first beanbag to replace my beloved Lazy Boy Lounger. And of course, it all started with my review of the Sumo Omni, an ultra-rugged throwable beanbag with more sitting styles than a clothing-optional co-ed hot yoga class. Ew. By the way, Filipino pro tip, if you want your new Sumo to stay new for longer, keep it in the plastic shipping bag for as long as possible. But enough with the trip down memory lane. We're here to talk about the new hotness in Uber Geek lifestyle accessories. 
the Sumo Lounge Omni Reloaded. Part beanbag, part lounger, part lawn chair, the Reloaded is a combination of the original Sumo Omni and the semi-rigid support design of the Sumo Sway. Sumo designed the Reloaded to be an on-the-go or in-the-den piece of furniture that could combine durability, comfort, and a unique style, all in a single unit, complete with nylon carrying bag. I ended up using my review unit on the roof of my house to get real sun on my skin, which is accustomed to only feeling the monitor backlight. Of course, just like that hot yoga class, sometimes clothing optional is the way to go. The Reloaded is essentially a padded frame that is 75 inches long, 27 inches wide, and 5 inches thick. It's made of double-stitched, ripstop nylon covering a heaping helping of dense foam over a steel frame. The Reloaded has three independent ratcheted swivels that allow it to be formed and positioned in the sitting style of your liking. Available in five colors, including blue, orange, green, fuchsia, and nature, the Reloaded can be set up in about 30 seconds without tools and without instructions. Unless, of course, you're a member of the Twit editing staff and you find angles absolutely baffling. The ability to fold and hide away brings comparisons to folding chairs and lawn loungers, but the comfort and utility of the Reloaded is unmatched, even by high-end temporary furniture. The padding is just right. The ratcheted swivels let you position the Reloaded exactly at your comfort spot, and the ease of deployment makes it ideal for the beach, the dorm, the living room, the backyard, the cookout or tailgate, your man cave, video game playing, or whatever the heck this is. The Sumo Omni Reloaded is available now for $219, shipped for free anywhere in the continental United States. Oh, wow, that was a very uh, relaxing review. Robert Balasser has brought his Sumo loungers along with him. These are, these are very comfortable. They're crazy. When I first got them, I'm like, oh, it's a lawn chair. But yeah, no, I've never had it's a lawn chair. It's more than a lawn chair. Way more than a lawn chair. Now, it is sitting right on the ground, so you wouldn't want to use it on a, in a campsite, right. right? Well, I mean, you can. They're actually crazy durable. This is all ripstop nylon. You can hose it down after you're done. Sometimes you want to. Sometimes you want to. And I like this because I can, so I can ratchet this forward if I want to pay attention. Yeah, you, you can set them at any angle you want. You can have the little you know, leg hump if you want your, your feet slightly elevated. Ozzy, let me try the leg up. Ozzy, come here. Oh, not that leg up. Okay, wait a minute. Let me. So if you go forward and... And then you can un, you can unratch it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's, it does it does work like adjustable okay. furniture that way. So it's like a lawn chair wrapped in padding. Wrapped in padding, but it's also it's really good padding. That's the thing about comfy. the sumo padding. It doesn't wear out after uh. a couple of you know weeks. Uh, this will be as comfortable a year from now as it is right now. And it's perfect if let's say you want something for the dorm that you could set up for. TV watching. Or I think video Henry gaming. would dig this. Yeah, it would be perfect, right? And then, then when you're done, you fold it up and you put it in the closet. Yeah. it's done. Well, let's get your pros and cons. Pros has to be flexible, yeah. comfortable. I yeah. mean, that's the first two things. Yeah. And also, it's it's really suitable for a lot of different situations. I could see myself using this at the beach, uh, while camping, mm. while in a dorm. Um, I use them down in the no hole. This is perfect for a sort of temporary <laughs> setup. If you want something for video gaming or you want something for movie watching. Is that uh, what you're doing down there? Watching TV? No, no. We're, oh, we're, we're working. We're working. <laughs> we're, working. we're setting up. If I see these in the no hole, I'm going to get mad. No, no. None of that. <laughs> no, I, you know what? I, I love their beanbags, but the one problem with the beanbags, they're a little hard to get out of. Same thing with this. Yeah. That's, that's actually one of the cons. The cons is because it's on the floor and because you kind of sink into it, really the only way to get up is the... Roll over. Yeah, roll over. Then... It's not the most dignified exit ever. <laughs> it's fine if you're 18 years old and you're, and you're limber, you can leap out of this. Precisely. Preci yeah, it's for a younger demographic. The other thing is, at $200 or so, it that's is pricey, a yeah. little bit pricey. Yeah. Uh, but you compare it to cheap furniture that's going to wear out after a couple of months, it, in the long run, it actually ends up being just fine. I understand they're working on a premium version that has a built-in catapult that they just launch you <laughs> out of it. And I think that would be a good thing. Well, what I really want is I want something that has a cover because a lot of the sumo bags have removable covers. You're always washing your sumo I'm bag. I'm always washing that yeah. one, exactly. Yeah. It would be nice to be able to strip this off so I that agree. I don't have to hose it down. Right. Uh, you know, just to cut down on the nastiness. Buy, try, don't buy? I'd say this is a buy. I Especially, think so. yeah, if you're looking for comfortable furniture to put in the man cave, in your kid's room for camping or the dorm, absolutely a buy. I, I, I don't want to get out of it. I've got to, I've got, the only thing, only thing missing would be snacks. Uh, yeah, I agree. Fortunately, they have a little pouch for the nature box. <laughs> and it's... <laughs> 
Oh, people are turning in there going, they finally jumped the shark. They're now lounging and eating snacks during the show. That's our job as viewers, they say. Don't, uh, so Nature Box is actually, and this is something I recommend to everybody. We get these at work, and I should really emphasize, this is a great choice for a company that wants to f offer its, uh, snacks. It's a great benefit for your employees. Very affordable. Nature Box gets delivered monthly. You can choose from a variety of styles. If you're vegan or gluten-conscious, soy-free, lactose-free, you can also choose from a variety of tastes, whether it's sweet or salty or savory or spicy. Uh, but they're all delicious, hundreds, literally, of different snacks to choose from. These are, let's see, all, by the way, nature, uh, nu nutritionist approved. It's got a seal right on the front and, uh, and never any high fructose corn syrup or uh, trans fats or any of that bad stuff for, you know, artificial flavors or colors. Um, this is, okay, I'm going to let you choose, Robert. You can have maple habanero pretzel pops. Whoa. I know, isn't that? It's a perfect yeah, combination. Anything with habanero. I'm, I'm, so in. I swear, I'm in. Don't rush. Don't rush, because we also have Santa Fe corn syrup. No, no, that's Wait my minute, stuff. Wait a minute, no, but how about pistachio power clusters? No, that's my stuff. Nut squares with almonds, cashews, and pistachios. Now, these are all kind of uh, come in resealable bags, which is nice. So you can have a little bit, seal it right back up. Um, sriracha roasted cashews. Those are good. Those are You've really, had those. Yeah, nice and spicy. Sriracha is a nice flavor. Praline pumpkin seeds, if you want something savory that's tasty. This is so much better than going to the uh, snack machine, the, the Snickers bar or whatever. Lone Star snack mix for our Texans. Barbecue flavored nut mix with multi seed chips, baked cheddar potato fries. These are just a few of them. We get a nature box. Actually, we get several nature boxes a month. You're going to want to too, but I want to get you started with 50% off your first Nature Box when you visit naturebox.com slash twit. You said you, 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 I tell you what, your first reaction was, give me the habanero. We've got, here we go, maple habanero pretzel pops. Let me just, can I have one before I give you the bag? No, fine. All right, just don't want to, just try it. Deliciously awesome snacks delivered to your door monthly. What? Don't eat this? <laughs> What'd you say? Free? It's not half off anymore? They're giving it to you? Free? That's not a good business model. <laughs> All right. They've just informed me that instead of half off, you're going to get a free trial. How about that? Naturebox.com slash Twitter. Free? Free snacks? Now what would you do? How much would you pay? Here you go. Thank you, Robert. Oh. <sighs> Habanero. Those are good. These are really They've good. They've got a little tang, but yeah. the maple kind of sweetness and the smoothness of the pretzel. Oh, that's mm. awesome. Mm. We're not going to be able to get out of these chairs. <laughs> Let's just stay here. Good night. <laughs> Turn down the lights. Thank you, While folks. While we go visit Brian Burnett, he's going to go camping with a Brave and Charger and the Survivor iPad case. Take it away, Brian. Brian Burnett from Before You Buy and Twit, and today I'm taking a look at the Bravin BRV Bank. This is a 6,000 milliamp smart, ultra rugged, portable battery. What makes it smart? It has Bluetooth, which uh, I'll get into in a sec. But just taking a look at the exterior case of the Bravin, it has a rubber matte finish that's easy to grip. Um, definitely feels tough. There's, it's water resistant, so it has a rubber flap covering the USB ports. Uh, there's two buttons, one to power it on and the other to activate the Bluetooth. As for ports, the battery pack has uh, two USBs, one that outputs 5 volts at 2.4 amps, and another for 5 volts at 1 amp, so one you can use for your iPad or your mobile device. There's also an in-micro USB port for charging the battery back up and a nifty USB adapter with a flashlight on the end of it. So what you can do with this is plug it into your battery pack and have a flashlight that you can activate through the mobile app. And it's fairly bright. So for accessing some more of the bells and whistles of the Bravin, you'll need to download the, the app. Turning on Bluetooth and connecting to the device is pretty simple. And then once you've done that, you'll be presented with a user interface showing the, the amount of charge left in the battery, along with being able to toggle on and off one of the USB ports if you're in case you're using the flashlight. There's a function for finding your Bravin, uh, which means it'll make a high-pitched noise. And also there's an SOS option for using when you're using the flashlight. 
finally, there is one option that is kind of interesting. It's a uh, bear mode. So in case you're worried about being attacked by a bear on your camping trip, you can put the Bravin into bear mode, and as soon as it's disturbed by a bear or some other motion, it'll uh, turn on the flashlight and make a high-pitched noise. It's not super loud, but it'll definitely get your attention. So as far as the battery, how, how does it do? Uh, I was able to charge my Moto X uh, three times over with still a little bit of life left in the Bravin. And I was able to charge an iPad 3 up to about 50% in a couple of hours. So as a battery, it works really well. Pros and cons. Uh, number one pro is build quality. It feels really solid. It's water resistant and it could definitely take a drop. Second pro is the software. It's simple to use and gives you a clear idea of how much uh, battery you have left and allows you to put the Bravin into bear mode. Uh, the third pro would be performance. Uh, compared to other 6,000 milliamp batteries, uh, this one does pretty well and charges devices fairly quickly. As for cons, the price would be the number one factor as the Bravin comes in at $129.99 which is pretty pricey for a 6,000 milliamp battery, but you do get a few other extras uh, for that price. And another con is the accessories. Uh, it comes with one USB cable, and the flashlight, while interesting, I couldn't help feel like it would be better used if it was integrated into the case instead of being a USB attachment. So is the Bravin a buy, try, or don't buy? Well, on the few camping trips that I did use this battery pack for, I would have to say it's a buy because I cannot imagine not using it now. I would never had to worry about getting it wet or dropping it, and it's, it does its job well, but it does come at a high price point. And if you're going to be camping and you want to bring along your iPad, the next product I'm reviewing is the Survivor Mossy Oak case for iPad 2nd, 3rd, and 4th gen. Now the Mossy Oak comes in a camouflage color, so definitely a, a good accessory if you're going to be doing some hunting. And getting the case onto the iPad is relatively easy. It just takes some fiddling. So as far as iPad cases go, this one will definitely be able to take a hit. Uh, there's some big bumper zones on the edges of the iPad to protect it in case of a drop. And there are flaps uh, that allow you to get to, th to access the ports. Uh, this case is water resistant, so you don't have to worry about getting a little bit of a splash on your iPad. And as far as the protective screen on it, uh, touch capabilities were fine. I didn't notice any lag or I didn't have any problems uh, using the screen. But one of the things I noticed is that it is a little hazy. Now, for pros and cons, really the main pro is this is rugged. You could drop it from a, f <laughs> a few feet and not have to worry about your iPad. But as for cons, it is super bulky, and the screen that protects it is a little hazy, so that might bug a few people. Now, for a buy, try, or don't buy, I'll give it a try, because depending on what you're looking for, this is probably the most protective case you can get for the iPad without completely putting it in a box or something like that. This has been Brian Burnett for Before You Buy. Thanks for watching. Thank you to uh, Brian Burnett, our technical director here at the show, and uh, avid camper. Is that right, Brian? Absolutely. You love to live outside. I'm used to it. He's used to it. <laughs> our producer, one of our producers, uh, Tanya Hall, is here. She also is the host of Marketing Mavericks. And are you a cook, Tanya? I am. You like to cook? I do. Uh, everybody who likes to cook has a slow cooker, right? I do. I think so. Especially if you work, it's a nice thing to do. You could put your food in in the morning, come home, and you've got dinner ready. It's the easiest way to prepare a meal, probably, yeah. right? But you know what's really disappointing to me? My slow cooker is not on, not on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and if anybody should have it on the internet, Leo, it's you. It sure. should, yeah, but is this on the internet? Well, so here's, here's what this, how this works. So this is the very first uh, smart crock pot with Wemo technology. So a crock pot is the brand name. It is. In fact, the uh, it's actually Jared brand, which they have um, uh, several other recognizable brands like Mr. Coffee, Grillmaster, okay. Sunbeam, that sort of thing. And they've partnered with Wemo to create some smart home 
cooking technology. Is, it might be warm. This is the biggest crock pot I have ever seen. <laughs> it is six quarts. It's pretty big. I have one that big that's a dumb crock pot, right? So it doesn't. This is smart? <laughs> it is smart. So what does this do that's so smart? Well, um, so it looks like. It's from Belkin? It is. Because oh, the, no. they, Belkin owns the Wemo. Belkin yes. is selling this crock yes. pot. Yeah, all right. Um, so it looks like a lot of other crock pots with the stylish, you know, chrome finish. It's got the uh, the stoneware crock pot on the inside. Mm. It's got the glass and it's got little holes, which I always think is good to the let the steam out. So it looks like every other crock pot. Yeah. And it's really simple from the standpoint of control. So if you see here, I should use my little pointer. Um Right here on the front, there's uh You're off I, mic, so you have to move the mic. Oh. As you move, move the mic. <laughs> you know, you think I know that by now. It's complicated. It's complicated. <laughs> there's high, low, and warm. So three settings. Yes. Really simple. They All crock pots are that simple. That's the idea. It is. They started getting more complicated, but this, this is actually very simple. What you do when you get the crock pot is you plug it in, and then you download the app. So it's really all about the app. Okay. For this, which uh, will actually connect to your Wi-Fi. It works with Wi-Fi, 3G, and 4G. Cool. Um, so you get it, you plug it in, and you download the app. Um, the app is available for Android 4.0 or higher and iOS 6 or higher. So um, there we go. So it up. So right here what you'll see is when you first get it, yeah. it's going You're to... You're off mic again. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be like not allowed so to... So there's this thing that you talk into that's called the microphone. <laughs> because you have to speak to all of us, not just me, it's just important. put your face in that thing. Okay? I'm going to put my face in that <laughs> all right. thing. Um, all right. So, <laughs> you know what? You, she's not wearing headphones, so you can't tell. I, can't I can tell. hear it, and that's why I have to you tell can. you. Yeah. So, you'll, you, it's going to ask you which device that you have, and they have a lot of other devices that are on this app. So, whether it's light bulbs, outlets, they have a humidifier, purifier, air purifier, and uh, the coffee brewer. So, you select the product that you want that you're going to connect. I like the Wemo. We reviewed that uh, a while ago. And I think it's a great product, but boy, this really adds to the line, doesn't it? It does. It does. And um, so then you, you connect to it. What's really interesting uh, to me, it's very simple, but you can set the temperature. So right here, um, it's telling me that um, we have it set for now, warm. You can do this if you're in the house or can you do this from work? I can do it from work. So wow. let's say that you have it set up and maybe you've scheduled the timer of how long you wanted it to cook on yeah. what temperature, which is what this is going to do. Yeah. But let's say, you know, for some reason, the show that you produce, uh, our host, long. runs really late. Yes. And you know it's going to be at least yes. an hour or more before you get home. Guess what? What? You just go to your app and you change it to maybe I, a I lower temperature. I actually really like this. And then you can, you know, come home later. It's really great for running around. And here what I've got is a four-pound uh, pork shoulder, and we did make something in, in it. So it, it smells really good. Yummy. We've been smelling this all day. I'm really, I'm dying and here. And I had to do the same thing. I had to lower the temperature because I wanted to make sure that it made it. So um, I think what this is good for is literally the really busy person who's, Maybe you've got a lot of meetings. Maybe you live in an area where there's a lot of traffic, so it takes you a while to get home, and you want to make sure that the food doesn't burn. Or maybe your kids, um, hey, mom, I forgot I have, you know, a teacher, you have a teacher meeting tonight, or, or I have to, you have to come pick me up after practice, and you're not going to be home when you think that you're going to be. Um, it's, a, it's a really great product for somebody that's very busy. I think it... You have to be really into food and really into cooking, probably, for it to be something worth it. Well, it's expensive it. compared to a yes. a dumb crock pot, which is just you know thirty or forty bucks. Exactly. So the 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 nice thing about a forty dollar crock pot is you just leave it. You just have to make sure that you make it home, right? Or the food's going to burn, right? The right. other uh, there is a downside to this, um, which is I think you know the technology itself. They're still trying to figure out because it connects to your Wi-Fi. If for some reason your Wi-Fi blinks or goes out, you could get an error message on your phone. Ooh, that would be bad. And it could say that your food's bad, but you don't really know for sure if it's right. bad. Did it just blink? Did it just go out? So that's kind of a downside. If that happens very much for you at home, that could be a problem. But overall, I thought it was... It's. I'm really interested in smart home technology, and um, this is at the cusp of just doing that. It's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. It's Crock-Pot from Jared. But you can get it on the Belkin site because it uses the Wemo technology. Exactly. The, and it uses the gene, the Wemo app. You don't need to get a special Crock-Pot app. You, yeah. The app is free to download. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, it works with other products. The other thing I would say is when you first turn it on, 
it actually smells like it's burning plastic, so it's kind of a scary that's, smell. That's normal. It is, and it does that for a few times, but then it goes yeah, away. It has so if to you worry about it, exactly. Like me, and I'm going to leave in a moment. Okay. And off gas. <laughs> Uh, no, that's normal on these things. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times uh, these uh, electric cookers have, because, you know, there's coating on the on the elements and they have right. to burn off. Yeah. So um, you said it was $130? bucks. it is $129, $130. Um, you can get it at Target, Walmart, okay. and Amazon. Pros and cons. Uh, the pros are basically that it's got remote access. I mean, that is a really great feature for a busy person who um, you don't want to have to rush home. You know, I even thought of times with my dumb crock pot where I might want to cook it on high for, for for a few hours, but I wanted to go to bed and then I had to get up and turn it this down. This is great, yeah. You could actually just grab your so you phone can set a or timer? schedule it. Yes. You can schedule it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do that. For instance, I cook oatmeal. So you put uh, Irish oatmeal, you know, the, the slow cooking oats okay. in, in, in at night, the night before, and eight hours later, it's usually a little bit crusty. But, if, but what I could do is set a timer to turn it on at 4 in the morning mm -hmm. and it'd be ready for me at 8. That would be perfect. And if you wanted to sleep in and you wanted to change the you time on it, yeah. You'd roll over, turn off your <laughs> alarm, turn off your hue lights, <laughs> and then turn off your crock pot. I'm just saying. <laughs> so so that's definitely a pro. The adjustable scheduling is a pro. Um, from the standpoint of cons, I think the most obvious con is the price. It's really expensive yeah. for a crock pot. It's like twice as expensive. So this is really for the person that feels like this is going to pay off, you know, because of your busy I schedule. Like or, I, I would buy this. I know. Uh, do they have other sizes besides six quart? Because that's awfully big. I think they'll probably will. This actually just became available. Okay. So you might find a few reviews out there that... Yeah, the Jared makes, you know, two, four quart and mm -hmm. make a variety size. And I have a couple of different dumb crock pots that are different sizes. But um, I think you'll see... In fact, if you might see some reviews out there that say the price is lower than it is, but it's not. The only places you can find it are $129. Okay. Because so, we waited until it was actually we searched. available. We searched yeah. everywhere. All right. Thank you, Tanya and Hall. It is a buy. By a the way. buy on the Jared Wemo Quack Pot. Yes. All white. <laughs> Thank you. Right. You catch Tanya Hall on uh, Marketing Mavericks every Friday evening, right here on the Twit Network. Monday. We, Monday. Monday night. Also Monday. <laughs> Monday or Friday, depending Whatever on you the please. day she's yeah. on. And uh, what's coming up this Monday? Do you know? Uh, yeah. So the next Monday, we're actually going to talk wearables. We have the head of marketing for Ralph Lauren talking about their brand. And a few others. I don't want to give it Just all Just tell away. them it's your last chance because tomorrow <laughs> when Apple announces it's wearable, it's all over. It's done. It's done. Yep. I should be very curious what they say. Yes. Because it's the day before the Apple announcement. Mm -hmm. They've got to be thinking about that. That should be fun. Uh, Marketing Mavericks Monday yes. at 5 p.m.? It is at 4.30 or 5, depending on how late we run for, yeah, for news. But which yeah. is usually pretty late. Yep. Like now. Oh, we're going to take a break. And actually, this is, couldn't be better timing. We've got some Hue lights to show you. But, you know, this will work with your crock pot and your lights. This will work with many of the devices in your house. If you want a home automation system that actually interoperates with everything, you got to try Smart Things. Smart Things was originally a Kickstarter project that was created with exactly that point. How do we get a smart home to interoperate easily with a lot of, uh, without a lot of effort? Smart Things has solved it. We've mentioned before the three uh, smart home security kits. They now have four brand new solution kits that help you do specific things like automating lights, saving energy, or protecting your home from leaks. There's a maker kit now to connect and integrate with your Arduino projects. That pretty much means the sky's the limit. And, of course, it works with your Wemo, so you could use it to, cr to control your crock pot. It works with your Philips Hue. You could have when the food starts burning, the Philips Hue lights turn bright red. You, it works with your Sonos audio system. So it could uh, it could start playing. The mom is cooking in the kitchen while the crock pot's heating up and your Wemo lights are turning red. It, it works with your Nest thermostat so you could turn down the heat as well as turn up the pot. You could, this your Schlage, uh, Schlage locks so it'll open the door for you. Your GE Honeywell, your Nest thermostat. I mean, the, the drop cam even. This is such a great system. We want you to take a look at some of the solutions. And by the way, take a look at the smart home security kits and the solution kits because you're going to get 10% off either when you use the offer code TWIT10 at checkout. Use the offer code TWIT10. That means solutions kits will start as low as 170 bucks, And home security kits as low as 350 bucks. It all starts with this thing, the hub. That's the key to the whole so, uh, operation there. That smart hub that talks to everything. Smart Things, I love them. Smartthings.com slash twit. And don't forget to use twit10 as the offer code when you buy to save some money on your smart home. 
All right, so I, we mentioned Hue. We mentioned that it works uh, with the Wemos, with the smart things, with if this, then that. And you know I'm a big fan of my Hue bulbs. Philips uh, makes these. These are the original Hues, which have red, green, and blue LEDs in here and can make any color in the rainbow. They've got new bulbs that are white only. They're less expensive, about half as much. The, uh, the Hue Lux, they also have another advantage. They're dimmable, which is great. And then they've added this little gadget, which I really uh, love. This is a, um, this, you know, you use your uh, smartphone or your uh, tablet to control the hues, but that's you know, kind of a pain if you want to turn the lights off to, to fire up your smartphone. Here's a switch, a four-way switch. Now, it doesn't even need batteries. You put this on your wall, or I actually keep it next to my armchair, and I can control my hues with one of four different programs right from the switch just by pressing the button. Let, we t took it home, and we gave it a try. Let's take a look. Well, I've, uh, I brought you to my kitchen <laughs> to show you the latest from Hue. Just to recap, we've talked about these a lot before. These are the LED light bulbs from Philips that do something extraordinary. Instead of just uh, being white light bulbs or yellow light bulbs, these are RGB light bulbs. There are three LEDs in each of them, red, green, and blue, that can be combined in any proportion to give you any color of the rainbow. Now, how do you control these? Well, these Hue lights, uh, connect to your Wi-Fi, let me just turn this off, um, using this base station. So you'll want to get, at least initially, the kit, which includes a base station and three bulbs for about 200 bucks. The base station is hardwired only, Ethernet to your network. You want to connect it directly to your router, and then connects via the Wi-Fi to these bulbs and via the internet to the outside world so that you can control your bulbs from anywhere using if this then that and other solutions. Um, I generally control my bulbs with the software. There's iOS and Android apps for both tablet and smartphones that let you do things like take a picture that you connect to the Hue bulbs, pick different colors in the picture so you can have all different colors. Uh, this is a picture of uh, the Japanese Cherry Blossom Festival. I can actually attach uh, each bulb to a different color of the cherry blossom. So let's make this one red just like the color of the cherry blossom. I'm actually picking this up with a color picker. This is the color of the branch, not exactly brown, but sort of. <laughs> and, and you see, I mean, that's really cool. You can have, you can feel like you're at the seashore or in the middle of a volcano, whatever you like using these RGB bulbs. But this is nothing new. We've seen these before. Uh, here are the two new products from Hue. First, these are the Hue Lux bulbs. These are half the price. Hue bulbs are $60 each. These are only $30 each. That's good news. Still more expensive than a kind of non-Wi-Fi connected light bulb, but you'd kind of expect that. Also a little bit brighter. These are the equivalent of about 60 watt bulbs. This is a 75 watt bulb, 750 lumens. Very bright, but one color, one color only. It's dimmable. You can make it darker or brighter, but that's it. Um, okay, nice. It's probably something you'll want to use in areas where you don't want colored bulbs in conjunction with the colored hue bulbs, and they all work with the same base station. You can get quite a few bulbs on a single base station. But this is even more interesting to me. This is called the Philips Hue Tap, and it's a switch for your Hue bulbs. You know, a lot of people complain it's just too much work to fire up your uh, phone or your tablet and control these bulbs. So they've given us a simple switch that gives you four different positions. There's an off and then three pre-programmed ons. It comes from the factory um, with a kind of a nice yellow evening light, uh, middle of the day bright white light, and a very blue outdoor daylight. Um, but you can reprogram those colors to be anything you want. And of course, the fourth button is off. This is nice because you can put it on your bedside table or on the wall and anybody can use the hues. They don't have to have access to your smartphone. They don't have to figure out how to hook it all up. So I like this feature. The, the negative on it, it's $80. So that's the, the con on all of this. The negative on all of this is it's pricey. $300 to get started, $60 for additional bulbs, $30 for the white bulbs, $80 for the tap. You can see it'll add up to a lot. The pros, it's completely flexible. There are apps to do all sorts of things with Hue. Uh, it'll work with the SmartThings base station. We've talked about the, the sponsor of SmartThings. It'll work with, there are apps that will have it synchronized to your music to pulse in time or change color to match the mood of the music. Uh, it works with if this and that. I love all of that. That's a definite pro for me, and frankly, I've got to put my money where my mouth is. I bought these, so I guess, for, at least for me, it's a, it's a definite buy. Pricey, but boy, I, I really like what you can do uh, with Hue. So uh, there's my look at the uh, Philips Hue. I like the tap, I, I like the Lux bulbs, and of course, I like the whole Hue concept. So a buy all around. Back to the studio. There it is, the, uh, the new Hue stuff. 
I have to say, uh, they've really, I think, done a great job of making an integrated system, and it's pretty clear Philips is committed to the Hue brand and is going to do a lot more. Um, I just was told by the folks who do the ISS Above uh, application, the application that uh, lets you know on your smartphone when the space station is up, up above, that they're going to interoperate with the Hue lights, and your lights can glow blue or whatever you want when the space station is above you. This is we're, Netflix did a great hack. That will change. Now, it's not available publicly, but I hope it will be at some point. That will change the hue lights in your room to match the scene on the screen. So when Tom Cruise is on the boat and the sun is shining, everything looks sunny and bright. When he dives into the water and he goes underwater and it's cool blue, the lights change immediately and the, the, the picture on your screen is extended. I think this is just a really neat ecosystem. And I love my hue lights. And, I, and we've, you've heard Renee Ritchie and I talk about them on Mac Break Weekly. We're kind of few fans. Renee's got something like 16 bulbs. I'm up now to 12. <laughs> it's a definite buy. All right. We thank you for joining us, by the way, on the uh, show we do Before You Buy every week to give you the latest products uh, every Tuesday. You should look for it on the Twit uh, feed, twit.tv slash BYB, or subscribe in your favorite podcatcher. But we also do something a little, little different with this show. We have a YouTube channel, as we do for all our shows, uh, twit. I'm sorry, youtube.com slash before you buy. But we uh, put each individual review up there as well. So if you want to share a review of a particular product with friends and family, you can go right to that individual review and uh, share that with them. That's at youtube.com slash before you buy. Hey, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, too, to our reviewers, Brian Burnett, Tanya Hall, uh, Father Robert Balliser of This Week in Enterprise Tech and Know How and Coding 101. Uh, thanks also to Jason Howell, and thanks to you for being here. And remember, you got to watch before you buy. We'll see you next time. Bye -bye.